Peggy 12. Today I'm going to talk to you about the sharp end of politics, that is warfare. War has always been central to the previous games and we've added a little extra effort this time to make it more engaging and feel a bit more like you're actually fighting wars in the Renaissance era. And what drove conflict in this era was of course men and money. This is a concept we've had in the previous games so we wanted to sharpen it a bit and make it more important to the player. And what we did for example with, with the men uh, is that we have the concept of manpower that we always had. And as you lose soldiers you will have to take it from your manpower pool to recover it. What happens in Open Rosales 4 is that the process of getting your manpower back is way, way slower. And this will really give you a feeling that if you fight the protracted war, if you lose a lot of men, if you say assault the fortress instead of sieging it slowly, if you fight costly battles, even if you win, you can have this kind of lost generation that you need to contend with. And then you might actually be out of the game for a long time, so you really need to manage your manpower. And then of course there are ways to deal with this, natural ideas where you can create a nation that can bring more men out of the manpower pool, for example. And you can build certain buildings like training grounds to help train up your manpower pool faster. And then of course, depending on which country you play, if, if you're a small merchant republic, your manpower pool won't be very big even if you try to optimize it. But what if you are this merchant republic then, what should you do? Well, you can do what they historically did, you can hire mercenaries. Of course they don't cost you any manpower, but they call it lots of money. So you have a choice there, you can still have an army even if you don't have any manpower. And, and money comes even, even more there because what we did, we, we felt that wars in the era was so expensive. I mean monarchs invent the new taxation systems just to be able to fund their wars. So we wanted to make them more expensive. What we did was that reinforcements now cost very much more money than they did previously. Uh, so if you go out into the war, uh, you have a, a balanced budget, for example, and, and you have a nice war chest, you think that this, this will be fine. This war will be over, the boys will be home for Christmas. Uh, but as you fight the war and the men die off, you have to pay to train up new troops. Reinforcements costs, and they cost a lot. You will go into this war and feel that you have lots of money, especially compared to the previous games. And you will enter the war having taken lots of loans and be close to bankruptcy. You can use your money to get the war started, but if it goes on for very long, you will really, really start to think about the economy. And we feel that these kind of things, changes that we've made, the small changes but important changes with manpower and the cost of war, will really help the player get more of a feel for the kind of trade-offs the Renaissance prince had to, to consider before he went off into war. One thing I should mention there, of course, is that what the Renaissance prince did, and what any modern ruler would do if he has no money, is that he would take loans. And we tried to help the player there by, by making it cheaper to take on loans. In, in the previous games it was more like, if you took a loan that was a loss. Now you're always deficit spending, because you need to fund the wars. And that can be nice for a while, right? But if you take lots of loans and you sort of the inflation clocks up, then you will end up in, in problems later. So you have all these kind of nice trade-offs all the time between short-term benefits and long-term problems. And that, that's the strategic part where we sort of, we hope that the feel of fighting the war will be much more different. And then of course on the tactical side, we've done some changes as well, just to improve how to, to get the feel right for how should it should feel to fight a war in this era. Uh, if you're a ruler, of course, being a soldier is not very nice. Uh, what we wanted was for the battles to be a bit more decisive. So, for example, we added a mechanic called shattering, in the sense that when you march your, your army into battle and you lose, before it just retreat a little bit and then you can fight again. But now, if you lose decisively, the army can shatter, and that means that your soldiers will break and run, and they will run all the way back until they find a safe province before you can stop them. And there they have to stay a bit and recover their morale. And of course, that makes the battles more decisive without actually making it so that you can lose your entire army at the roll of the dice. Because when your army or when the enemy's army is shattered, the winner 
can sort of use this time to siege down provinces and to take fortresses and to, to really decide the war based on one battle. Another concept we added here to sort of give the same feeling is the concept of an army being disorganized. Um, we wanted to get away from the thing where you chase armies too much all over the map and, and to sort of slow the whole thing down a bit so you, you have a chance to think so that if an army loses too much morale, uh, it becomes disorganized and it can't move. If you win a battle, but you had to spend your entire army to do it and your army is exhausted, then it will be locked in place for them to recover so that the battles will be more decisive, but you will spend less time running after armies and trying to chase them down. We have these kind of concepts that on the surface of it feels fairly complicated, but we really want the player to understand what happened. So we've redone the entire combat interface so that anything that happens and that decides a battle should really be visible on the map. There should be no in more instances where the player don't really understand why somebody won and why somebody lost. It should feel sort of the same as in the previous games, but it should feel much more, if you know what I mean, right? It should be more decisive battles, they should be, they should cost you more money and, and you should feel more pain when you lose the soldiers in the field. And, and I really feel that this has made the game so much more fun.